Today, I'm going to explain episode 5 and 6 of a Brazilian dystopian thriller series called 3%. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. After the last task, Ezekiel goes to his office and finds Aline inside. Since she hindered his privacy, he doesn't want to hear anything from her. But when she mentions the fingerprint she found in his office, he is obligated to listen. After doing some research, she has figured that the print belongs to a kid from the slums. Ezekiel gets more nervous with time and asks her what she wants. Aline promises to not tell the council about the kid if he steps down from his position after this year's selection and hands her the responsibility. Ezekiel has no way but to agree to her conditions, bound by the secret about Augusto. The scene shifts to five years earlier. It's Ezekiel's first year as the chief of the process. His wife Julie is an agent and is by her husband's side at every step. She helps him with the first speech which he delivers flawlessly. They are living their dream as a couple and couldn't be happier in life. During the interview round, Julia gets to interview a contestant with a kid back in the slums. As soon as the contestant mentions her son, Julia's demeanor changes. She rejects her in an instant without a proper reason. After the first task, the staff members are in a meeting when one of them brings up the topic of the mother who was eliminated. They think Julia was too harsh on her, but she argues the woman was not mentally strong to handle the process. Ezekiel notices the slight change in her behavior but doesn't call her out. The process goes smoothly and the 3% selected are sent offshore. The scene shifts one year later to the 100th process. This time, Ezekiel wants Julia to be his personal assistant and not the interviewer. Julia is not happy about the change, assuming it's because she eliminated the mother last year. Ezekiel assures her that he just wants her to take on bigger responsibilities. He teaches her how to run his personal computer and access all the CCTV footage from the city and from the facility. In one of the missions, the agents find a member of the cause and chase him into the slums. Ezekiel and Julia watch the mission through cameras. Everything goes well until an innocent man is killed in the chase and declared collateral damage. Julia gets a look at the kid who the dead man was taking care of and is shocked. When no one is around, she rewinds the video repeatedly and watches the kid helplessly standing in the corner. She cannot help but break down crying because of him. She is so bothered by the image that she loses her temper with a contestant that day. Ezekiel inquires about what is bothering her, but Julia refuses to admit that something is wrong. The next day, she prints out a picture of the kid from the video and stares at it for a long time. She also accidentally drops a wine glass and almost steps on the pieces. When the next process takes place, Ezekiel finds her alone in his office. She says that she was monitoring the participants, but Ezekiel can tell she is lying. That night, he decides to check what exactly she does when she is on his computer. He finds out she has watched the video of the last operation over a hundred times. The next morning, he calls her out for it and promises to help her when she tells him the problem. Julia breaks down into tears and explains that the kid in the video is her son, Augusto. She left him in the slums when she turned 20 and had to apply for the process. His father was never present in their lives, so she left the kid without a guardian. Now that she has seen him, she knows he is scared and alone. She wants to go to her kid and help him. Ezekiel is surprised by the information, but he quickly composes himself. One thing he knows for sure is that there is no way for Julia and the kid to be together. Julia retaliates and starts losing the grip of reality. Her only wish is to meet her son and she is ready to do anything for it. One night, Julia goes to Ezekiel's office again and listens to the audio from the operation. Using it, she finds Augusto's address and gets ready to sneak out during the day. When the entrance door is open, she tries to make a run for it but is stopped by Ezekiel. Seeing her lose her mind like that, he reluctantly sends her back offshore to get help from the doctors. In a short time, Julia loses the will to live and commits the unthinkable. The incident comes off as a huge shock to everyone offshore because it's the first time one of their citizens has committed. It's the most hurtful to Ezekiel who now blames himself for her death. The council suggests he leave his position to get over the death, but he stays adamant about remaining the chief of the process. That day, he wears a torn blanket and goes to the slums for the first time in years. He finds Augusto in a house and tells him about his mother. The naive kid doesn't believe him and asks him to go away. With time, they make friends with each other and Ezekiel becomes his guardian. He teaches Augusto that one day he will have to come offshore because his mother would have wanted him to have a good wife. In the following scene, we are shown a clip of Michelle and her brother Andre playing hide and seek in their house. 
After their parents' death, Andre was the only guardian to Michelle. But when he came to the process a few years ago, he was killed by Ezekiel. The cause of the murder is still unknown, but Andre's death is why Michelle joined the cause and wants to end the unfair process. Back in the present, Michelle and Raphael talk about their alliance. Since they both work for the cause, they decide to help each other in the game. Fernando watches them talking and is confused about their friendship since Raphael has proven to be a horrible person until now. For their next task, all the contestants are given a single room. Their parents or close ones are in the rooms, much to their surprise. Fernando meets his father. He is proud of his son for coming so far in the game. It's revealed that the next task is just an option for the contestants. They can either take a huge box of money and return home or continue the game without a single penny. Fernando wants to take the first option, but his father doesn't support him. According to him, Fernando's life will amount to nothing if he stays handicapped his whole life. Since his father has always supported Fernando, the comment surprises him. At last, he chooses to stay in the game because if he goes out now, his father will abandon him. Meanwhile, Michelle is approached by an agent since she doesn't have a family. He tells her the options she has and gives her time to choose between the money or the process. At the same time, Joanna is attacked by a strange man. He has been sent by the gangster whose son died because of her. The man has been offered a lot of money by the gangster to kill Joanna and has entered the facility after pretending to be her father. He gives her two options to choose from. Either she pretends to be his daughter and gives him the money she gets by quitting or she dies instantly. Joanna, of course, chooses the first option, but she attacks the man as soon as he tries to free her. As he is about to kill her, she tells him to go ahead because she would rather die than not win the process. Suddenly, the man stops and reveals that he is an agent. Ezekiel had found out about Joanna's true identity and wanted to know if she is in the process to run away from her past or if she really wants to be in the game. Because of her answer, she wins the next round as well. In the meantime, Raphael also meets his mother. She wants him to return home with money and help his brother who he betrayed to come here. However, Raphael doesn't want to quit this far in the game. His mother blackmails him, threatening him to tell the agents the truth about his identity, but Raphael stops her from doing so. In the end, she walks away disappointed in her son. While most of the participants decide to stay in the game, some take the money and make their way back into the old life. Then we see Ezekiel in the city meeting Augusto. He cannot continue visiting the kid anymore, which saddens both of them. Augusto tries to make him stay by laying down on his lap, but Ezekiel reluctantly pushes him aside and walks away. When he is back in his office, he is devastated, having bonded with a kid like his own for all these years. Then the head of security, Agata, asks him what is wrong. Ezekiel tells her about Aline blackmailing him, but refuses to tell her about the kid. Even then, Agata promises that she is always by his side in the game. It is then time for the next task, which will be individually designed based on the participants' strengths and weaknesses. Before the task, Michelle and Fernando meet in her room and make out. Later, Michelle is called for her personalized task. She is asked to convince a pair of parents to send their 10-year-old daughter to the process when she is old enough. Michelle thinks the task is too easy to be true and is proven right when the parents turn out to be burners. They greet her and ask her about their daughter. Michelle cannot get herself to speak, knowing that she was the reason behind Berna's death. She gives them the bad news, but lies that Berna died in an accident. The mourning parents would never send their next daughter to the process, which makes her task even more difficult. For Fernando's task, he is asked to analyze the assignments that have been given to every batch of contestants. By the end of 30 minutes, he will have to suggest a new task with its meaning. If the task is good enough, he will pass. Then for Raphael, he has to trigger two images exactly at sunset. But the catch is that there are two buttons on either side of the facility that he has to press at once. This means he will have to convince someone to help him in the task. It's personalized for him because the agents know he is considered the black sheep among the participants. Michelle is having a hard time completing the task. While the parents are crying about their daughter's death, she suggests they send their youngest to the process. The couple angrily tries to leave when she stops him by telling them about her brother. After listening to the story about how she and her brother were separated because of the process, they realize the best way to get over Berna's death is by sending their youngest to the process. Michelle finally passes the task. Fernando's 30 minutes are also over. He tells the agent that the last task they performed was not effective. If they really want to test the participants' emotional capability, they must tell them that their loved ones are about to die. 
That way, the participants must choose between a quality life or a life with their loved ones. The agent, impressed by the unique suggestion, passes him. Outside, Raphael asks Joanna to help him with the task. However, she refuses to do so since the management already knows about her true identity. As a last resort, he asks Fernando. Fernando has never been on good terms with him, but Raphael insists he must help him if he loves Michelle. With no other way to win the task, Raphael tells Fernando that he and Michelle are with the cause. If he doesn't help him, Raphael will reveal Michelle's secret and both of them will be killed. Fernando doesn't want to believe him, but he cannot risk getting Michelle in trouble. Hence, even though he doesn't support the cause, he agrees to help. Right in the evening, both the projectors are opened and Raphael passes the task. In the last scene, we see Michelle return to her room and cut a part of her abdomen to reveal a hidden capsule inside. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.